who would win in a fight, a hand-to-hand combat between Captain America and Batman? Could Superman lift Thor's hammer? Who's faster, the Flash or Quicksilver? Who has a better aim, Hawkeye or Green Arrow? If these are some of the questions that keep you up at night, then all right, you f- this is the podcast that you are looking for. Welcome to another episode of Systematic Ecology. We are your priests to the geeks. I am one of your hosts, Will the Thrill from Chapel Hill, and it is March Madness. It's one of my favorite times of the year. Being from Chapel Hill, we have all the brackets of college basketball will north carolina be a number one seed i don't know i hope so they deserve one that's my humble opinion but as with our topic today uh you know we're going to talk about some number one seeds like superman versus thor and some 16th seeds like those um the the those uh heroes and and um low seeds that could be like a bracket buster Like we're talking like Stilt Man and Jack of Hearts. Uh, Welcome to welcome to Systematic Ecology. I'm really excited about this episode. Uh, I am. uh, It's no secret that I am a fan of comic books and superheroes. And my friend Christian Ashley is is a super fan of comic books and superheroes. And today we're going to talk about something that we've been long waiting to talk about with the Marvel DC crossover Justice League of America versus the Avengers. Man, I can't wait for this. Uh, Christian, welcome. How are you doing? What are you geeking out on? And uh, what is your like hype level for this particular episode with what we're discussing today? Yeah, uh, I'm doing well. I'm done with classes for the week, so I'm just getting ready to rest for the weekend. Uh, what have I been geeking out on? I have finished Lupin the Third Part Two. I moved on to Lupin the Third Part Three. Mm. And uh, just a little warning out there: if you just happen to want to follow along with me, it is a little raunchier than what we have in the past. So just prepare that for your eyes. <laughs> uh, it's always been kind of a raunchy series at certain parts, but it got they took the uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? They took the door out with this one. Then viewer my discretion this, advised. Viewer discretion yeah, yeah. advised. Yeah. Hype level for this, uh, it's up to 11, man. This is Spinal Tap up to 11. Yeah, I, I agree. I'm so ready agree. for this. Yeah, so so this is something that that we've anticipated for, for a while. You know, some of those questions I asked at the beginning of this episode, um, you know, there there's the big two of comics, Marvel and DC. And yes, there's creator-owned stuff. There's Image, there's Dark Horse, there's um, Boom Studios that people... people create great comic books and graphic novels um, across the board and across the spectrum of this type of fandom and geekdom when it comes to uh, this avenue of storytelling with pictures and word balloons and graphic novels. But when you talk about the big two of Marvel and DC, people ask all the time when we huddle in our comic shops and comic cons and other places, we ask questions like, yeah, who would win in a hand-to-hand combat between Batman and Captain America? Who's stronger, Superman or Thor? Like, who who's the stronger magician between Zantana and um, who's the Marvel Scarlet Witch? Like, who who's going to go at it? And so we argue about those things and create those brackets and thing. Well, um, here's the crossover we we waited for, and it has a long history of uh, of these two giants in the comic book industry trying to make this happen having some setbacks, disagreements, and then eventually in 2003, 2004, there was a big crossover between Justice League of America versus Avengers, or in issue two, Avengers versus Justice League of America. They switched it back and forth. They try to be super well-balanced when it comes to this. And uh, the creative team in this, we'll talk about here in a little bit, are are legends in the business and and have some history there as well. And so those are the things that we're going to kind of explore here. There's spoilers here. In this, uh, we do encourage you to go out and read the source material, grab the graphic novel, go on eBay or go to your local comic shop and grab the graphic novel. In uh, 2022, they re-released this graphic novel because George Perez, the artist on this book, uh, was wrestling with cancer and he was in his final days. And so they re-released this graphic novel as a means to, um, and some of the proceeds of this graphic novel went to his cancer treatments. And so uh, that's a big part of this, this story and the context of what's going on here. Um, 
So go hunt it down, read it over. If you don't care about spoilers and want to hear Chris and I just gush over the art and heroes doing crazy, wacky things in a multiverse kind of crossover, uh, it, it is bonkers. And there's so much here. And we're going to try to contain it all, try to contain our geekdom, but it's, it's going to be hard. But there's spoilers. Uh, go read or just listen and be entertained with Christian and I. Um, uh, having fun with all this. Cool. So let's hop into the episode. Um, Christian, uh, in terms of context for this, what what is your history with Marvel and DC? Like those are the big two. When people think of comic books, those are the heroes and the teams that people think of. Um, what's your history with Marvel DC? Which one did you lean toward more than the other? Um, where, where are you when it, when it comes to this, this matchup? Um, like a lot of my early loves it started in the 90s with the cartoons uh, i had the batman the animated series x-men the mm. animated series spider-man the animated series silver surfer iron man fantastic four superman justice league so on and so forth and then from there my dad being someone who has always collected a lot of comics uh, when he was a kid and as an adult and even till now we'll still go to comic cons together to got, fill in the holes left behind that he wasn't able to get to back in the day uh, i started reading the comics uh, i started more marvel because you know spider-man I, he's, there's a reason he's my avatar he's always been my guy mm -hmm. i kind of gravitated towards him more um and honestly it's always been marvel over dc even though i would argue batman is probably better than anything animation wise other than maybe the x-men animated series yeah. and it, it, it's just one of those things just got to the point of i just favor marvel a little more and not to say that dc is inferior in any way shape or form it's just i drive with the characters better in marvel yeah I'm with you. Like, uh, so one of the first cartoons I remember watching as a kid and superheroes was definitely the super friends. And so the, the big three of Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman were all the way, all, always there at the top for me when it comes to superheroes, when it comes to comic books and collecting, it was the X-Men, it was Marvel, it was Spidey, it was the Avengers that, that those were the comic comic books that like those physical entities, those single issues, floppies that, that I would buy on the spinner rack and, and take home with me that I would spend my lunch money on <laughs> to my mom got mad at me for for buying <laughs> comics instead of my lunch uh but so so that was that was me but but then you know as i started to to grow and understand the the two universes yeah i i love superman i i love uh batman i love the justice league so over the years i've grown to love these two teams and and i love teams like i i love bringing a team together and seeing how they work out a grand threat individually they're awesome heroes they have gifts they have powers they have their own books um but when there's something greater than what they can conquer or or tackle and they bring together their team uh, I, I really love books like like X Men, Avengers, Justice League. So so this is this is a big part of that. And um, so this crossover, I, I'll share. Like I collected comics as a kid through the '80s and early '90s, and then quit uh, because you know got into college and seminary. And I was like, you know, I'm just going to do my thing. And then early 2000s, uh, my wife on father my first Father's Day when Hannah was just a, a you know a few months old was like. Hey, I bought you a comic book. Uh, be a kid again. She had no idea the Pandora's box. She, she was opening up for me. I was like, heck yeah, I'm diving all in full steam ahead. And this is like 2002, 2003. And so this series, this crossover, um, Justice League versus um, Avengers, um, came out in 2003 and 2004. And that was like, oh man, I'm hopping in. So I actually bought these actual single issues, this four story, uh, four part story arc uh, individually on their own and and loved it so much that I was just like, ah, here's it. This is my world coming together. So um, yeah, the reason we're talking about this now is that, you know, it, it's just one of those things where you, you think about with our combo catch-ups and those things we geek out on, uh, those questions of, yeah, could Superman beat Thor in an arm wrestling match or could Superman lift M Mjolnir? You know, the, those kind of stuff that we answer. Well, it was answered and it was wrestled with in back in the early 2000s and 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 now. So um, super fun. I'm really excited about this. Um, let's talk about the the creative team a little bit. So we have on this book, um, GLA, GLA versus Avengers. 
Uh, we have Kirk Busick and George Perez as a creative team on this book. And so, um, Christian, what do you know a little bit about Kirk Busick or, or George Perez when it comes to the creative team? Uh, it really is an all-star. They both have their feet, um, and creative, um, uh, muscles in both universes. And I think that's a great way that they pull them in for this, but, but what's your history with them and what do you know about that? Yeah. Uh, music. I know him more outside of his Avengers run for, you know, Thunderbolts and uh, the untold tales of Spider-Man that he did back in the day to kind of fill in the gaps of what was happening, you know, in Peter's early years and Perez, of course, there's Teen mm. Titans, uh, and he also did the Infinity Gauntlet too, if I remember correctly. He sure did. He sure did. Yeah, both of those tremendous. And did he do Crisis? Yep. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. You know, Kirk Busick um, didn't didn't marvel. So so DC did their Kingdom Come, which is one of my favorite graphic novels of all time, with Alex Ross and and Mark Wade. And so Marvel's like, oh, we got to do something like that. Should we do it? And and let's just go. All right. All right. Let's let's rewind just a little bit. It's hard not to like be all over the place with this crossover. But with Marvel and DC throughout the years and the decades, if one institution or creative IP created a superhero, then Marvel or DC had to counter counter create and create like the same version on their side. So so, yeah, there's Green Arrow. Well, guess what? Marvel's going to create Hawkeye. Uh, the the trick bow caster slash like aim perfectionist or whatever. Yeah, Superman, Thor. You you so they're going to go back and forth. If you have like the Flash, well, Marvel's going to create Quicksilver. So so they go back and back and forth. So DC did Kingdom Come, and and then Marvel's like, we got to do Marvels. We got to do our version of that epic thing with Alex Ross and Kirk Busick was the actual author for that for that um, huge uh, graphic novel slash event that Marvel did. Uh, but he also did his own creator, own stuff with Astro City. But he also wrote um, for Superman for a while and Avengers. So he had his feet in both worlds. He has creative chops in both DC and Marvel. And then George Perez, um, God rest his soul, uh, rest in peace, died in 2022 with uh, pancreatic cancer. Um, it was just a legend in comic book artistry. So he did New Teen Titans. He did Crisis on Infinite Earths, which was a huge, big crossover with DC in terms of how to wrestle with the multiverse and to hone it into something a little bit more understandable for, for the modern day um, audience. But he also uh, drew for um, Avengers and Fantastic Four. And then he did the 1991 uh, Infinity Gauntlet with Thanos and, you know, the the MCU and the Infinity War and Endgame. Well, guess what? That's all based on the Infinity Gauntlet that George Perez drew. And his style is that he, if he, like, uh, how do you describe his style, his style, Christian? Like, there's so much on one particular page. Like, if you, it's like the Where's Waldo books of superheroes. Super small, but also grand big splash pages there's so many, he can fit so many characters and superheroes on one page that it's just unimaginable. I'd argue attention to detail. I don't know if that's the best way to describe it, uh, but when you yeah. get four issues with every single member of both the Justice League and the Avengers in it at least once, you know, even the obscure characters no one has ever heard of or the Reserve Avengers you've heard, heard of maybe once. Yeah, I, I think attention to detail might be the best way to put that. Yeah. Yeah, so so just a legend in terms of um, comic book artistry, and so we lost a good one there. But like his 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 work is always will be uh, will always be there, and we encourage everybody to go out and and read and and buy and and be a part of. So, Busick and Perez, legends in the business. So I couldn't think of a better creative team if you were going to do a crossover between Justice League of America and, and Avengers in the same world and in the same comic those two should should be the ones that would lead the helm in that. Uh, so a little history behind that. They tried to get this going. DC and Marvel tried to get this in like the late 70s, 1979, and it was canceled. They tried again in the early 80s, and they just couldn't agree on what that would look like or what was going to happen. There was a crossover between X-Men and the new Teen Titans with um, 
uh, Walt Simonson and, and a few others on, on that book. So there was this kind of uh, neat crossover between DC and Marvel with, with that. But then when it comes to the big two, like these, these really couldn't agree on putting a story together or getting a team together until the early 2000s. And um, the 90s was a big boom with comics and uh, making money. Then the early 2000s, they had there was this bankruptcy and it kind of crashed. And then there was this upsurgence of um, popularity or getting back to the basics of comic books and comic book superheroes in the Ultimate Universe and DC and Marvel. They really kind of stripped away the the chase and the money and the capitalism when it comes to selling variant covers and comics and getting back to just genuine storytelling. And so there in 2003, 2004, this, this, um, this crossover happened. Uh, all the questions people asked, man, it happened in, in this series. Um, Christian, did you know about this then? Did you collect the single issue? Did you come to it later? Where, how did you encounter this particular story arc? I'm fairly certain my dad bought these first because I, I want to say that this was the time when Wizard Magazine was still a thing. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I do remember seeing artwork in there of like the, the splash page of, the, of Starro versus the Avengers or I think Terminus versus the mm -hmm. Justice League as well. Might have been an ad there, too. I mean, like, wait, what? That shouldn't be happening. Right. What, what is that about? And I know he bought them. I remember reading them until later on. So I probably didn't when he first got them. Yeah. 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 Um, again, I collected single issues and, and have it in, in my box and, you know, eBay, they're, they're a little higher from, from their cover price and, and people are doing it, but, and, and there's a resurgence with Perez and wrestling with his illness and cancer and trying to raise money and awareness and, and to support him with, with this particular crossover between both industries, uh, DC and Marvel to kind of come together to support this legendary artist. So, so that, that's all there, but, um, but yeah, like I, I can't recommend this enough. If you if you're a fun if you're a fan of comic books and you're a fan of these particular teams and them in the movies and superheroes, it's just a fun read. Now it's super dense. There's a lot of panels. There's a lot of words. Uh, there's a lot of lot of <laughs> a lot of heroes um, smashed and and fit together in a particular page and panel. But but yeah, I can't re recommend this enough in terms of how how fun this is and. Uh, the nuance between how these particular universes see each other, um, reflect on each other, how they judge each other on terms of how they do comics and, and the vibe that they have there. Um, you know, Christian, in terms of being a, a Marvel fan, but then also super respectful of, of DC and some of that stuff, like what was your overall, you know, putting this all together as a, as one collective story, how does this sit with you? Is it satisfactory? Do you, do you love it? Um, what are some moments there? This series is immensely satisfying to me. Hmm. Uh, as someone, my favorite comic series of all time, not because of its quality, but because of what happens inside of it, is Marvel Team Up. And hmm. probably Brave and the Bold wouldn't be too far behind. Yeah. You know why? Because you have team ups between heroes. And as much as I love my single Spider Man issues, it's also nice to see him with Hawkeye or Iron Man or Wolverine or Nightcrawler or what have you. And this is that with two companies. And it just makes that little geeky heart of mine grow 10 sizes that day. <laughs> to see. To see Superman and Thor brawling against one another. To see all the the in jokes and references to things about how Jordan is now the Green Lantern, but now it's Kyle Rayner, but now he's also the Spectre. As time is being manip manipulated there, you see Captain America in his regular outfit, then you see him as the Captain, then you see the shield mm -hmm. changing in different panels as time is being messed with. It, it, it's everything. This is fan service done well and done right. Uh, as far as moments go, I mean, can you really get much better than Superman with the Captain America shield also wielding Mjolnir at the same time. Oh, I mean, man. come on. Uh, is there anything better in life? Uh, I know. And, and as we get in, we'll, we'll talk about the single issues here in a, in a minute, but, but yeah, there's those moments where with any team up or any hero coming together or, you know, there, 
the kind of the comic book trope is that these two heroes come together, they misunderstand each other. And so they fight and then they come to an agreement and then trust each other and then team up to fight the bigger threat that's out there. <laughs> and that's, that's what's going on here. You have two teams who are like, who are you? What's going on? We're going to fight. Oh, wait, uh, there's a bigger threat larger than us. Then we probably should work together as a team. And then they work together and then they defeat the, the big bad at the end. So like that particular outline, outline and and trope of how you do superhero comics is is all there but the little moments along the way and the little attention to detail like you said about what george perez really does in his art is is, is fantastic and if you don't if you just skim or if you just blow through this thing you're not going to catch that that little small panel of um bruce wayne batman sipping tea that jarvis just handed him off to the side and and you're like oh my gosh is that batman batman like sipping a little teacup that jarvis just handled him <laughs> like handed him like oh my gosh what is going on here so there's little moments like that you're like oh this is the best thing i've ever seen in my life um so so yeah i i totally agree it's totally satisfying this is what we wanted um it is absolutely bonkers you can't they it's four issues but they're kind of premium um extra pages um kind of extra content we should want it's not just like a 24 page floppy comic with a regular cover it's it's kind of like each each um comic each issue is almost a graphic novel and is in and of itself so um super fun super fun when it comes to that all right so so these teams in the time capsule of 2003 justice league of america you have superman wonder woman batman aquaman flash Green Lantern, which is Kyle Rayner, not Hal Jordan, because Hal Jordan is the specter at this point in history. And Plastic Man. Yep, yep. You have Plastic Man as the Jar Jar Binks and the comedy um, re comedic relief in the midst of the Justice League. Now, when it comes to the Avengers, you have Vision, Scarlet Witch, Quicksilver, Iron Man, Cap, Thor, and Hawkeye. Um, and, then, and then Wasp shows up every now and then. Uh, with that team too. So those are the main teams when it comes to that. Um, the basic plot when it comes to this, you have the Grandmaster, who if you remember from the MCU, is Jeff Goldblum. But it's not Jeff Goldblum in this particular issue. The Grandmaster is this chess player, eternal slash outside of time, observing the universe, uh, likes to play games, watching all these things take place. Um, and then Krona, which is... Um, this DC kind of, I don't know how to explain him. When we talked about DC deities, Christian, we didn't even mention him, which I feel kind of bad now, but like, how would you explain Krona to like the lay person who doesn't understand comics? <laughs> All right. Well, if they know enough about Green Lantern, you're going to be okay. Okay. Because he's one of the, the guardians uh, that, I can't remember their species' actual name. Oa, uh, Oa, Oa. Uh, Oa is the planet they're on, but I think they have a different name. Right, I, I'd have to look. Uh, it's Malthusian. Okay. And his whole thing was he was researching stuff. He wanted to understand creation and mm -hmm. how he came into being because, like, the Guardians there, they were like one of the the earliest species in DC continuity that had uh, sapiency. So he was all about that, but like he started doing things that they weren't approving of. So they decided because they didn't believe in uh, capital punishment, they were just going to mess with his energy and spread it around. Yes. Um, and then he's able to reconstitute himself and become a villain, uh, trying to find like how did we get here? And he's going to use any means necessary to find it. Kind of like an anti anti life equation <laughs> to an yep. extent. Mm hmm. And he's, he's yeah. come here because, like, he's asking these different universes, these different realities, these questions of, like, how they got here, what's going on. And we see, like, the crime syndicate being destroyed. We see uh, Archon and Thundra and whatever Earth he's on, I can't remember, uh, being destroyed because I can't answer him. So G Grandmaster realizing this kind of goes, well, what if I distract him with a game? Which sets yeah. up the premise here. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. So there, there, it kind of starts off with these questions like, okay, we have these two universes, 
from two different companies, two different multiverse. You know, I, we understand the multiverse at this point. We understand the different versions of superheroes and, and what they're doing. But, but the big plot is they start with like, what is it? What is the secret? What is truth? What is the universe? What's behind all this? And and that's Corona asking these questions. And at some point we get a little backstory that, that yeah, he's asking these questions. They're like, nope, you've gone too far. Um, we're, we're, we don't believe in capital punishment. We're not going to put you to death, but we're going to curse you with disembodied energy, which is a great name for a metal band. Like if I was going to be a metal band, disembodied energy would, would probably work. So, so they disembody him and he kind of goes throughout the universe trying to figure out the secrets to all thing. And grandmaster encounters him and then kind of, yeah, tricks him with a game. Let's have a game of chess with these two great heroes and teams from these different universes and see if they're matched up against each other or give them a quest to find these different things. And maybe, maybe that'll like, satisfy his inquiry or or itch for for knowledge or or whatever but but we know that like it it gets pretty bonkers there at the end so um so all right folks we're gonna go with with um each issue there, there's four and we won't go too detailed we want you to read the the detail we're not going to get to all of it it's hard to do it we we could do an episode on each particular comic book and talk about it and gush over it so yeah one of four justice jla versus avenger Busick versus Perez. You you have on the cover the big three for for each universe: um, Superman, Wonder Woman, Batman, and then Thor, Iron Man, Cap. And then the other side, the wraparound, you have all the other characters of the Justice League and um, um that. So so you have these universes dying. Um, people are trying to figure it out, and we talked about in kind of deities and um religion of of marvel you have this kind of embodied universe called eternity and there is at the very beginning before right at the pro prologue you said and there was a universe uh, a journey into mystery with uh eternity holding a galaxy in his hand and and let's see let's see what happens here um and you have this match this chess match between grandmaster and um Krona and these two universes and and really the plot here at the very beginning of book one is that you have these crossovers what would what would be a particular villain in one universe shows up in the other so terminus which is this giant cyborg kind of villain uh starts fighting the justice league and and they're like who is this new villain uh conquering our our world and and what does that mean and why is this new thing showing up and then and then when you have um, the Avengers show up, you have Starro, which is uh, the the first villain that showed up in the first Justice League book way back when, decades ago. The first villain the Justice League ever came together to fight was Starro. Well, here's Avengers fighting uh, Starro, and they're like, what is this? We've never seen this before. What's going on? And there's this interdimensional multiverse crossover where they're confused because they're seeing heroes slash villains they've never seen before. Um, Christian, what stands out with you in this kind of first issue of, wow, this crossover event? It's that, that moment, like ever since I first saw those two, two page spreads outside of the comics, like I want to see what happens here. And we have the perfect opportunity to show off the strengths and weaknesses of both teams fighting someone that the other team would be used to fighting. Yeah. And it's so much fun. We, we get Wanda being able to like kind of out manipulate Starro. We have uh, the scientific success and the strategy with Batman telling the Justice League what to do to systematically take down Terminus. Uh, and we have a ton of things there, which I, I was rereading this earlier today. I was like, why does this kind of sound familiar, these events of this series? And it's kind of, it's not the same. A hundred percent, but it's like the Avengers Defenders War hmm. uh, that they had where Dormammu and Loki were manipulating them to get this one artifact. Instead, they've expanded that into 12 artifacts here. They need six artifacts in different reality to yeah. in, in each of these different realities to make sure that they don't they're not destroyed by what happens here is like the Grandmaster reveals to the Justice League. And is this where we set up how the Earths are different or is that the second one? I think it's um, the second one. There's a little bit here. There's definitely um, so so Flash goes into the Marvel universe and encounters yes. like a mutant being hunted down by like uh, a kind of a a, a mass crowd, a, a 
kind of a mob ch- hunting down this this mutant. And he's like, "What kind of what kind of world is this?" that a mob would hunt down someone who just because they're different than the others. And, and then the justice league goes through and they're like, yeah, what, what is this that allows Dr. Doom or these places? Like what kind of heroes are they not doing what they're supposed to be doing uh, a little bit later? I can't remember if it's this one or other one, the captain America looks at the DC universe. And he's like, wow, they revere their heroes so much. Um, are, are these heroes fascists? Are they like, um yeah you know authoritarian like what are they not giving their people like some freedom here to be who they are so yeah the different philosophies in terms of how you write your hero and the universes they're in is a big part of this hero um a big part of this this crossover and we see that specifically between cap and superman later on the series they have a big tension they argue i i I was like man they're being a little whiny they're being a little baby like what what is going on here um Eventually, they explain that because of the multi-dimensional, uh, multi-universal rift is causing them to be cranky and kind of hangry and and edgy. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, if that's how you're going to answer, but they, man, they're being they're being a little edgy there. But but it just goes to show that Cap and Superman are like the pinpoints and the the ultimate idea of a hero between these universes. And if anybody's going to be attuned that something's off and something's wrong then those two are going to be the ones to be like, hey, something's not right here. We need to pay attention to what's going on, whereas everyone. Um, um, so, so yeah, that, that book one, um, they're, they're fight, there's this multi-dimensional um, kind of extra-dimensional rifts and what they call extra-dimensional Taurus of like Lobo goes to Shi'ar um, Empire and starts fighting. They're like, who are these people going on? Where eventually um, Grandmaster shows up, Metron shows up, and they give them a quest. They're like, all right, in order to fix this, you have to find these find these 12 um, items of great power. And six are from the Marvel Universe, six are from the DC Universe or something like that. And I'm like, wow, this is going to be a long series. If they have to try, if they have to find like 12 like <laughs> items and this quest of, of doing that. And really this is just a kind of a, a story tool and an excuse for them to explore the different aspects of the two different universes. Um, I, I, I kind of like that. I was like, wow, man, that's a lot of items to go find and hunt down. How long is this series going to be? Um, but it's just an excuse to kind of explore what these universes are and, kind of what they entail. Uh, what did you think of Christian when they were like, Oh, 12 power items from soul gems to cosmic cube, to the casket of ancient winters to uh, the, the power battery to Medusa's mask. I mean, it's like everything in the world. Like, what are we doing? It's continuing the theme of rewarding fans for being fans in that, Hey, you don't have to understand everything that's going on here, but mm. if you know where these come from, you're better off and you're going to understand the story a little more, you know, knowing what the cask of ancient win- winters is, or, you know, knowing what the spear of destiny is to the DC universe and mm-hmm. how you contrast the different worlds and how, you know, doom is a thing in Latveria. And also you would have some dictators on the justice league side, but not, they don't focus on that. It's kind of, like, how do we look at these different universes? How does Marvel, uh, the whole hated and feared aspect has kind of been a thing from the beginning. It's like, as soon as a superhero does anything wrong, well, you'll have J. Jonah Jameson, like, print one thing in a paper and everyone will believe it. Like, Spider-Man's a menace, you know? <laughs> and you'll have other people, because uh, Jonah would never do this because he's not a racist. It would be like, the X-Men, they're mutants, they're different. We need to do something about them. And then compared mm-hmm. to DC, you have the, the, the beauty of like, hey, there is a Flash museum. These people love their heroes. And you start getting this, the starts of that idea of how are these universes different? What can they do? What are these items that are so different do in different universes? Oh, and Darkseid gets the Infinity Gauntlet. Oh, no, everything's going to die. Oh, wait, it doesn't work here. Thank God. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. And, and so 
you know, they, they hold back a little bit in this first issue. Like they, they have the quest, they have the mission, there's a rift going on, they're back and forth. They, they jaw at each other and they're like, how do we, how do we get introduced to these two universes and how these two teams understand the other universe? And it's that classic Marvel team up or, or hero meets another hero and misunderstands them. They fight and then they join up together. But before we get to that, like Avengers had definitely have their opinions on, on justice league and just have their opinions on the Avengers and their world. Um, at, at the end of this book, uh, they have their mission, what's going on, but then Thor gets impatient and throws his hammer and it just cracks Superman's jaw and just throws oh. him out. Um, and so that's the splash page. That's the like, Oh my gosh. Thor's hammer just met Superman's jaw and, and it's pretty explosive, but, but there in the small little panel, um, again, I use small intentionally. The atom has been spined. The atom has shrunk down super small. Think Ant-Man except DC universe, but it's the atom. And, um, he learns what's really behind this game. And that's, uh, grandmaster and Krona, working together to try to figure out this chess match of what's going on. Uh, so, so that's kind of the cliffhanger is like someone in the DC universe knows what's going on, but yet you have this anticipation of the fight between justice league and Avengers. All right. We have to book two uh, and it's not named GLA versus Avengers. This time it's named Avengers versus GLA, you know, and then you have cover, you know, it's the who's who uh, in Avengers and Justice League. They're, they're filling out uh, the characters. It's getting a, a crowded cover. And the name of this issue is the contest of champions. So there is a lot of fighting in this book. And so the Avengers eventually call the JLA the Squadron Supreme Light, because again, Squadron portrayed is like the Justice League version of Marvel. Um, you get, get a little backstory. There's some matchups. Um, you get Flash and Hawkeye. One of my favorite moments is Hawkeye doing a boomerang arrow, arrow at Flash, thinking that's going to trick him. But one of Flash's big rogue galleries is, is boomerangs. He's like, hey, look, I understand boomerang. You're not going to, you're not going to trick me with that, but my all time favorite. Oh my gosh. We now have, if you're going to ask the question, who's going to win in a hand to hand combat between Batman and, and Captain America, well, we get it. We get, we get two pages of a fight and it's silent panels. And by the end, they're blocking each other. They're fighting each other. It Batman eventually says it's, con it's conceivable. You could beat me but it would take a very long time. Instead, let's work together and figure out what's going on behind all of this. So, so, so they, it's a draw between Batman and cap, but they come together like, look, obviously something else is going on here. We're very smart. Let's figure this out together. And so they kind of go off to try to figure out what's going on behind the scenes between this multiverse interdimensional, fight what else is going on there christian that in this in this particular book that stands out to you it's it's a great moment between the two of them batman and captain america it's like the silent panels it's a great way of putting it it's like you just get the narration of faint or like you know he's gonna punch mm -hmm. here or what have you and they're both just like tactically assessing the situation batman's like okay look you're probably gonna win but there's a bigger threat out there. Let's work together. Then you get the two of them going, if I'm remembering my issues correctly, to the Batcave, and then yes. Cap sees the memorial to Jason Todd. And there's that panel where just, you lost a partner, too. Mm -hmm. It's like, you, I, there's no like representation of Bucky, if I remember correctly, but you know that's what right. he's thinking of. And that kind of humanizes Batman a little more for Cap. It's like, Okay, well, I already agreed to work here, but like I can understand this man on a more empathetic level than I could before, having lost the same. And this would be like two years, I think, before Winter Soldier would come out in comic form. Yeah, but you know that mm -hmm. is what it is: retcons and Marvel and all that. Uh, well, DC's no stranger to retcons either. And you get a, a funny little panel, a, a page where Ben Grimm just comes in because Cap has asked him for uh, Fantastic Four for help. Yeah, and <laughs> he, he makes fun of the giant penny. Like, uh, that had never been a thing before now. We have the thing of the Fantastic Four making fun of the giant penny of Two-Face 
in an actual comic produced by both companies. And like, <laughs> does it matter to the story? No, but it matters to me as someone that's totally something Ben would do. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's that, that attention to detail to who these characters are, to what they represent to both realities, both the universes and to the fans that just makes me appreciate the series even more seeing those on, on page. And, and as comic book, fans there are times when we have certain creative teams that work on a beloved property and we're like man this they're not capturing who i believe this person to be you're like wow they're they're not and there's some who are like oh they're knocking out of the park this is great but there there's sometimes like it's, it's hard to find the right voice like you and i both bond over the last jedi and whether we think uh, Luke Skywalker is captured well or not, I, you know, again, we're going to talk about this with Joshua later. But you know, when Mark Hamill is like, "Hey, do you want to do this?" and starts questioning it, I'm going to believe Mark Hamill, not Joshua. Uh, anyway, we're going to keep going. Uh, in the same way, within this book, like you have, um, they are capturing each voice of each hero so so very well. Now, eventually. Down the line, there's a time when I'm like Cap and Superman are being super edgy and and like grumpy. What is going on here? But they they answer that at the end of why that's happening. They're very stressed about the tension yeah. between these two universes. But but in terms of capturing the voices and the characters and um what they're about, they they just they just do it so well. And and again, like that that moment in the Batcave where Captain America is literally standing in the Batcave. How freaking cool is that? And bonding. And then Batman, of course, does what Batman does. And it's like, hey, do you want to get sentimental or are we going to solve this crime? Are we going to solve this problem? <laughs> you know, like, hey, we have no time to like get in touch with our emotions. Let's let's um <laughs> let's solve this. So so that that's what happening. But yeah, you have different not only the Avengers, but other Marvel heroes like Thing and Fantastic Four. You have Firestorm, Red Tornado, Black Panther, Wakanda. Like they're they're out hunting for these power items, these twelve items of power, and and they're finding them. And I'm like at this point in the character, like man, they're they're doing this really quick. And then the the stat, like oh three to one, two to one, um, four to four to two. Like oh, who's gonna win this contest? We're on the second issue. It's supposed to be four who who's gonna who's gonna win this and and they they kind of they kind of solve it here at the end where they all kind of collect them at the very end and then and then man it's it's a it's like a they end with a cosmic cube where they're really batting that around like some big cosmic football and eventually um they they call it a draw there's a draw between avengers and, and justice league and um oh but before we get to the end we have the big matchup. We have Superman versus Thor. Uh, yes. Christian, do you want to describe who who wins this battle? If you're asking out there, drum roll, please. Who would win between Superman and Thor? Who wins? Yeah, I, I'm trying to remember. At, at this point in time, Superman eventually manages to like either catch Mjolnir for a second and then put it out of the fight. He still gets hurt a little bit. Then he takes down Thor. But is this when... Like mm. Hercules and She Hulk, like recognize that, and like three other guys start beating up Superman because Thor just got <laughs> taken down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, that eventually happens. Like, yeah. but but in this, like with with Batman and Super uh, Cap, I'm like, oh, it's a draw. I'm like, oh, in this series, are they going to do this with every single one so that like everyone's a tie, so they don't argue like who's stronger than the other? I'm like, oh boy, every single battle is going to be a tie because in this crossover event. DC can't beat Marvel. Marvel can't beat DC. But in this particular one, Superman literally takes down Thor. He he yes. literally takes him down. And but but Superman's pretty beat up. And then he's standing over like a a lifeless. He's not dead, but like a, a beat up Thor. And he's like, "All right, this is the single toughest opponent I've ever fought." So yeah, Thor loses. But in, with anybody who Superman has fought think of all the the villains all the things that he's been through if he looks at thor and says this is the toughest opponent i've ever been a part of um or or but uh, or fought i i think that's you know that's a big big cred there to, to thor um but in the midst of all that you do have like it's a draw it's it's uh um all but it's not over. You're like, oh, is this over the series? No, 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 no. It, all is lost. The final panel is like everything goes to white. Um, there's this kind of multiverse 
explosion where you feel like it's all over some something's something's up um so so it's not over but it looks like even though it's a draw they both lose especially when it comes to like corona and um you know, like Grandmaster Galactic shows up and there's a spinning galaxy. You feel like everything's going to die with all these 12 kind of uh, items of power, the multiverse, what's going on. Oh man. Boom. In the book two, it, it, it fades to white, not fades to black, but fades to white. I, mean, I guess both universes are dead, right? Christian they're over DC and Marvel will yep. no longer print comics. It's just all over. Never printed another one after this. It's over. The superhero fatigue hit early before it even can happen. <laughs> and, and the fact that Galactus is brought in too is such a cool idea because in Marvel canon, established way before this, he comes from before the Big Bang. Yeah. So if anyone is going to be able to answer Krona's question of how did we get here, well, it's going to be the person who was there at the very beginning, who is canonically Galactus or Galen as he was at the time and then he uses that to manipulate the realities to then kind of start merging them together almost like they did with amalgam with the marvel versus dc back in the 90s but way better done this time around hmm. yeah 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 so so that's the cliffhanger like i i love comics in the way that they have like the final page and you're like oh am, am i gonna buy the next issue well, if they don't have a final page cliffhanger then then maybe not but but i was like yep okay we're gonna we're gonna hop, we're only halfway through so um book three of four and if we're talking about leveling up covers goodness gracious man look at the characters on this comic <laughs> It's just everyone who's who of Marvel, DC, um, everyone. And again, but there's no X-Men. Christian, where are the X-Men? I don't know if there was like something going on between like the Teen Titans and and the X-Men crossover. Um, if Marvel and DC is like you could you can touch every single hero except the uncanny X-Men. I mean, Teen Titans are in there, Beast is in there, but he's he was an Avenger at some point, but, but nowhere do I see Colossus or Wolverine or Jean Grey, not, not a single time. So evidently they're kept out of this, even though like everyone in the DC and Marvel universe are a part of this. I'm not salty about that, but I guess they got their crossover earlier. And they were like, Hey, you got your crossover. We're going to do something different this time. Um, but yeah, this covers absolutely, man. If you just Google JLA Avengers, music, Perez crossover, three of four and just look at that cover holy cow so so they jump in and this particular issue all right so if they are fighting if issue one was like setting up the two universes issue two is them fighting against each other and who would win in a fight issue three is that they've merged these two universes together and they all feel like they're part of a single shared universe and their memories are all whack because they're like, Oh, didn't we do this together? Didn't we do that together? Um, big events in the DC universe and Marvel universe. They're like, Oh, that's our shared universe. We all experience that together. But cap and Superman are like, Nope, something's wrong. They've been all pissy in the corner. They're all like being bratty and, and, and moping. I'm like, dude, what is going on? Uh, but, but something's going on where they feel like something is off. Something is, is wrong. And so, that that is what happened. Eventually, they come to understand that yeah, something this can't be the way things are going because Corona somehow manipulated it, and the shared universe can't be the final universe. They have to do something uh, to get back to their original universes. Christian, what else? What else is going on in here that you're like, man? Um, issue issue three before we get to the final one. Yeah, it's the idea when you want to cross over like this, you want to see how would they handle other villains how would they handle other opportunities here like we start with dr doom joining the source wall with the jla just beat him uh, then we have the avengers beating brainiac in a battle like yeah i, I want to see that on page i want to see those fights but <laughs> it's those teases of what could be uh, and it also funnily enough even mentions what the original crossover would have been in the 80s i think it was going to be like kang and the lord of time yeah. like i think the wasp mentions that at one point in time and but we have the two representatives of each universe, Superman and Captain America, both realizing that something is off, which I, I think is pretty apt for the situation we're in, that they're the ones who realize first and they go, okay, you know, things look good here, but are they really? 
Is this really how things should be? What should we do? Yeah. Uh, there's a page here where they're having a big luau and a big, like all the, all the heroes between DC and Marvel are having a big meal and a luau together. They just lays around their neck and they're all hanging out. And then you have Wonder Man and Wonder Woman <laughs> in an arm wrestling contest. We never see who wins, but at least they're arm wrestling. Wonder Man, Wonder Woman. There they are. If you ever wanted that in your fandom, well, George Perez drew it. And there you go. There's your picture. Um, but, but yeah, again, Cap and Superman are kind of sulking. They're kind of figure out what's going on. And, and then their memory is like, yeah, remember that time we fought Amazo and Ultron or uh, Kang and Lord of Time? They're like, no, no, something's off. That's not the way it should be. So, so they, and then it goes white again. And then they start figuring out that this kind of shared universe is off and they're fighting villains together. So if issue two is them fighting against, against each other in issue three, they're teaming up together to fight these other collective villains from their collective universes. And, and that's kind of as fans, that's what we want to see. Yeah. We want to see them fight against each other and see who would win, but against their collective uh, villains, uh, we get to see them what they would be like if they teamed up together and actually work together um, as a team. Oh yes. Um, yeah. So there, there's a page where um, Spidey, Spidey shows up yep. in book three, being interviewed by Clark Kent. Yes. So uh, another clue that things are off is that you have Spider-Man being interviewed by Clark Kent from the Daily Planet. And you're like, wait a minute, this isn't the Bugle. It's the Daily Planet. What is going on here? So that's kind of cool that yes. Spidey shows up. Um, uh, with that. And again, it, it gets, uh, it's very dense. There's a lot of words and a lot of art on every single panel and this blending of, of the universes together. But at some point um, you have the two worlds, a big splash page and, and it's just beautiful of two worlds crashing against each other with Iron Man on one side, Superman on the other. And they're like, this, this isn't what we want. This, this is not the end game that we want to see happen. How are we going to team up and work together uh, to be this. And at some point that all the teammates are, are joined together with all their power, all their minds. And it says they reach out tapping their teammates, wills, their power, their souls. They give willingly everything they have until there's a sharp crack that a rolling thunder across clearing skies and northward a landmark suite of fifth Avenue. And they go back to the Marvel universe of the Avengers mansion, uh, mansion and Jarvis sitting there. Um, so, so they kind of, they, they, they kind of hold back Krona and these universes, but they know it's not over yet. There's something going on. Um, what happens at the end of this um, Christian for you in terms of what's the, the cliffhanger that, that's leading to the um, issue four? It's just raising the stakes even more. Like, Obviously, I know they're going to be fine at the end of this, but like, how is it going to happen? We're like at the worst case scenario here. The worlds are colliding together. They're going to be gone. How is our team going to get out of this? Grandmaster is pretty much gone at this moment in time. Uh, Metron's being Metron. <laughs> and uh, that you introduced the Phantom Stranger. <laughs> Yes, is kind kind of like uh, if you've read your early Justice League, he's like one of the most Deus Ex Machina characters who ever exists. It's like, mm -hmm. hey, I know this stuff, and I'm going to bring you here. How'd you do that? Because I said so, and that's <laughs> literally what happens here. <laughs> Welcome to comics. Yeah, and, and it's perfect. Yeah, and then there's a splash page of like a chessboard, a checkerboard of all the major events and teams within the. Uh, GLA and the Avengers and you turn the page and all these kind of big events um, that, that have, that have happened in the DC universe and uh, the Marvel universe all the way from like, you know, um, Hank Pym slapping wasp to, to uh, um, you know, Parallax. The, the Parallax and, uh, Christ on multiple earths and the flash and running the, the cosmic treadmill and uh, Bane breaking Batman's back. Um, they they kind of flash through all these things. You're like, Oh, is that what all that has happened? Are those universes that we're a part of? And these two teams are reflecting and seeing what they've experienced as teams, as individuals, their heartbreak, their relationships. And then that mutual bond of like, yep, 
okay, we understand what you've been through. We've been through that as well i mean again like dc and marvel they copy each other and they're all the time with their heroes and their storylines and their big events um you know what's the biggest way you could flatter someone you copy them well they do it all the time um but within this story the two teams and how they relate to each other and understand each other and bond with each other is seeing each other's experience. I think we can take that to heart with our own experiences. When we share our own stories with other people, how do we earn their trust? Um, how do we, how do we become vulnerable to the other person and let them know what we've been through to let them understand that they're not alone because we've all been through these similar experiences together. I think that's pretty important and a big lesson from this. I uh, think, yeah, it's a big smash up superhero fight and all the things we dreamed of but underneath is this drama of heroes understanding heroes and their common story of experience and grief and loss and and what it means to fight and stand up for what is right christian in terms of understanding relationships and trust and vulnerability what 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 stands out in this in this these comics for you and then yeah you're in seminary we're we're in parish ministry. We have a big team. We have 14 hosts here on systemic ecology from all different backgrounds and different gifts and uh, the wide spectrum of beliefs of conservative and progressive or whatever, whatever you want to label us. But, but here we are as a team together. Um, that's important. It's learning to have empathy. And if you can't have any empathy, learning how to have sympathy for someone. And like we talked about earlier with Captain America and Batman, it's like, yeah, they agreed to not fight one another and they're kind of working together. But what really solidifies it is seeing, you know, uh, Jason Todd's costume in the Batcave wow. for Cap mm -hmm. and going, we've suffered the same thing. Yeah, you're not going to get sentimental about it because you're Batman. But we are now, we have a reason beyond the original reason to work together. I am closer to you as a result of this shared experience we both have and losing someone like that. Um, and we have uh, these teams have worked together for so long. You see them both fighting for one another's sake against this other team who is also fighting for their sake, for the sake of their worlds, even though the Avengers are fighting for a world that hasn't always treated them the best. And mm. Superman even wonders like, hey, do they kind of have a point? Am I being uh, am I a force for good if I'm causing people to rely on me instead of themselves? And when it comes to, to stuff like us, like, I mean, it would be so easy for me to hear you talk about your wild ideas about how, you know, this is how Christianity should be. And then you hear me say the exact same thing, oh, excuse me, in the exact same topic, hear a complete and utter opposite view. It'd be so easy to just shut me out. But it's harder and better to listen to someone else and see where they're coming from, even if at the end of the day, you're not going to change your ideas and I'm not going to change my ideas. But I can still learn from you, who has had way more experience than me, who has been in ministry longer than me, and how you've done things. Like uh, being at your church last year was a mm. huge boon to me. Uh, not only did I got to see all of you guys in person, but to like see how you do things. And if I had just said, Will's a progressive and a Lutheran, God help us all, like <laughs> I, I would have lost out on all those opportunities because I was being shallow. Mm -hmm. And there's a time to be firm. There's a time to stand like, here, here's what I believe. I'm not changing unless new information is presented to me that helps change my view. But there's also a time to just listen and it's, li hear what someone else has to say. And I would be the lesser if I did not have you in my life and I didn't have other people like James, like Joshua, who challenge the things I hold dear because of how I've come to believe in what I believe. Well, if I just stick to those things, then... I mean, sure, if no one's ever challenged me, have I really learned anything? Have I really, like, come to that position, like, in a full way? Yeah. Yeah. Well said, Christian. And I, and I think you're right. That's, that's the reason why we have a lot of hosts on this podcast um, from different backgrounds to try to model for others that we can have different folks and from different backgrounds and different um wherever you are in the spectrum of, of Christianity or faith that, that you can still work together and geek out together and be friends and be, be family. 
regardless of of if there are some things that you see differently when it comes to how we interpret scripture or the age of the universe or um, Im- important things within the church or not. And so, I, and I think you see in the, this book, you know, that the reason the Avengers and the JLA has endured all this time is because they have different heroes together with different gifts that, yeah, there are times when, when, when they disagree or they have tension and you're like, man, they have conflict, but they resolve that because they're all fighting for a greater good. And for all of us here at Cincinnati Ecology, we come together for the greater good of expressing our faith and pointing to a larger good of, of God's love for all people. And we all have different gifts and express that in different ways. And it doesn't mean that we're always going to agree or, or we aren't going to have tension or, or, or things get, you know, you know, rose petals and, and beautiful things all the time, uh, because people don't grow when, when you're comfortable all the time. Uh, so, so anyway, I, I appreciate that Christian. And, and that's kind of, as I'm reading this book, I'm like, man, you know, maybe this is kind of a microcosm of who we are, systemic ecology and what we can do and express ourselves out, out in the world. Um, because definitely people who wanted to have the clickbait of, of, of just being kind of like, um, you know, reactionary to all these different fandoms, but, but can we have a deeper conversation and come together and, and, and support one another? And that's what we're doing, man, look at us getting sent on. All right. So the cliffhanger for, uh, uh, as we talk about this leading into the final page of, of issue three is you have literally captain America and Superman shaking hands, little tears running down the side of my cheek. And they all say together very well, we fight. Oh God, hear us. You hear us, Corona. We're coming for you. The Justice League, the Avengers united all the way to the bitter end. And here you have Cap lifting his shield. Everybody's lifting their arms and they're they're ready to go. End of book three. And all right. So if issue one was understanding the universes, issue two was the two teams fighting each other. Issue three, them fighting their villains and learning how to work together as a team where here comes four because they're going to fight Corona and team up with each other. Boom. Are you ready? And the cover is literally Superman holding Mjolnir and cap shield ready to go with lightning striking in two worlds crashing against each other. Man, if that doesn't get you to buy a book, I don't know what would. It's the epitome of what brings this whole thing together. This without the buildup beforehand. Yeah. That image would look cool. But now we know the context for it. Now we know why Superman is willing to hold the shield of Captain America and Mjolnir at the same time because he's learned to trust these people. He's learned that they are fellow heroes. Yeah, they don't always do things the same way. Yeah, our Earth may be different. Yeah, your son may feel a little greasy to me or whatever he says about that. <laughs> but hey, we have a common goal here. We are here protecting people. We bring justice, you avenge. Like, let's do this. Uh- Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. And that was a good point. Like, why didn't I think about the four? We bring justice, you avenge. But man, two of those go go hand in hand. Um, the splash page in book at uh, the um, uh, book four, you know, the prologue, you have like all these the Avengers and Justice Leagues together. But then you have these shared universes of Spidey. Yep. Again, you have global yep. disasters. You have. Um, uh, these things happen again. I'm a little salty that the Uncanny X-Men aren't in here, but again, maybe that's because they already did that. Um, but then Superman and eventually of all the, the conflict of the back and forth between Captain America and Superman. Um, eventually Superman is like, we need a commander and Cap, that, that needs to be you. And then Batman off to the side says, yep, I agree. And you're like, Oh, Okay. Superman and Batman on the same page saying, Cap, you, you should be the one to lead this team, to be to be the commander, to kind of be the one to lead us in, in the midst of this. Yeah, we have the the muscles, the brawn, the smarts or whatever, but you're you're going to be one to lead us. I, I love that so much. Oh, yeah, because one of the things I do bring up is like the DC Universe, their main team has w- way better powers <laughs> and yeah. people in charge are way stronger than marvel and that's one of the things to kind of question themselves about like here you know batman's on the team uh, green arrow is on the team but you have wonder woman you have martian manhunter superman the flash the green lantern any one of those could take over the earth at one point in time if they really wanted to versus you know captain america thor probably yes would be able to do that but 
it's Captain America who takes charge, who has always been the one consistently, yeah, physically weaker than most of his teammates most of the time. Yeah. But because of his knowledge of how to handle war, how to engage as a superhero, he's got to be the one in charge. And that takes humility. And that takes what, if the things that happened before hadn't happened, this wouldn't happen. Yep. Yep. That experience and the stuff together, that that's what leads it to it. And the name of this issue is the brave and the bold. So as a, as a yes. kind of callback again to kind of a DC team up uh, part and, and yeah, it, man, friends, this book, there's so much bonker things that happen. Every little panel that goes on, the the character moments, is, it, we can't go through all of it. But in the midst of it, just let's just say that, like, Cap gives Superman his shield and says, I think you need this. If I'm going to be commander, please take my shield and use it. Wow. Okay. Eventually, yeah, Superman grabs the hammer and is able to use it. And they team up. And all the, all the heroes, all they all team up together and fight this grand Krona like crisis of multiverse crossovers and, and eventually they, they resolve it in the end uh, by, by working together and defeating this and going back to their, their normal regular universes um, in terms of this particular book, what, what stands out for you other than like, I just can't describe it to our listeners. You got to go out there and, and read it yourself that each little panel in itself is just a, a gem in, in comic book history. Everyone's been a child, historically speaking. But if you've ever been that child who had action figures, and you would have your own little crossover events where, you know, Superman fought the Juggernaut, or, you know, Spider Man fought Amazo, or what have you, like, hey, yeah, sure, as a kid, you're not really thinking strategically through those things, but you see this happen. Like, Spider Man fights Dr. Light. And then we have, uh, and gets, basically beaten for a second there it's real bad for him <laughs> and it's just in one panel if you're not paying attention to it you're not going to see it but you right. also have the hook show up and then get uh, taken off the page for like what is that one little like pterodactyl kind of guy who just worked for the justice league for so little but it's that moment you get to have that crossover of all these people together yes yeah, sure we've been immensely blessed we have the justice league and the avengers but this is every single person who's been admitted with the justice league from all mm -hmm. their iterations up to this point. This is everyone who's been a member or a reserve member of the Avengers brought into this book to have this final fight. And it just makes the little child inside of me just so excited to see this on the page. And it comes not for the sake of just having that happen, but there's actually a plot going on here too, which just heightens it even more. Yep. Yeah, well, it, it all comes to a head. You know, you you have these two verses just 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 going at it, blow for blow, fighting for the survival of their own universe, and and yeah, like we talked about in the deities issues with Marvel and DC, like you have these big deities or these kind of eternal beings that are overlooking or watching the universe and manipulating the universe just to see what would happen. And, and that's what's going on here, but you have eternity and infinity coming together. They kiss, they make out. Um, and, and they're trying to save the overall fr fabric of reality within these two universes. And eventually of course, both universe DC and Marvel is not going to let one universe die. Uh, of course they win. You know, we're not, we're not going to say that, but in terms of how they come together, the details along the way, the character moments of how they work together is super fun to read and to be a part of an experience. And this is somewhat canon. Like, yeah, you, you have Superman with, with the hammer and the shield uh, fighting because it's endorsed by the Avengers themselves. And, and yeah, they, they win, they win at the end for all things that are good. Um, they come together and and they save the universe and uh, there you go. There you go. Sorry for the spoilers, folks, but yeah, DC and Marvel is going to continue to move on and write stories in 2005 throughout that. Um, how, how did this end for you? Was it satisfying for you, Christian? Was there, were there moments you were like, oh, this ended too fast or they could have added a couple more issues or, or was it satisfying to you? I mean, if they wanted to keep going, I wouldn't stop them. But I also know it's an immense... Uh, amount of work to get this mountain to move to have these two companies work together to begin with and uh, because they've had a bad past with one another at times and sometimes they've been more friendly and then you have uh, Quesada, Quesada, 
who I already don't like for one more day, saying some very bad things about Superman that makes DC hate him even more. So like, this isn't going to happen today. And like Marvel's official position is like, we're not going to, uh, what's what they're looking for there. Uh, we're not going to promote someone else's work. And it's like, but don't you realize this is what happens when you have a good writer and a good artist around here to make these stories. Uh, you have all these things working together. It's like my only real gripe with this is that I think Wally West kind of gets the shaft here multiple times over. <laughs> it's not his fault that there's no speed force in Marvel, but like right. he doesn't get to see Barry and like, Oh, why couldn't yeah. that have happened? It's been like almost 20 years since that happened. But other than that, like this is kind of close to perfection to me to yeah. see all of my favorite heroes here fighting each other, then working together for a common cause even though at the end of the day, they're probably not going to cross over again for a very long time from now. I'm satisfied. Yeah, I, I agree. I think, um, you know, we have these two big competitors and it's a business. They're, they're big competitors. They're competing against each other, but you know, when one, one IP is doing great or, or corporation is doing great, then it levels up and the competitiveness of the, the two will bring the other one up and try to, to fight even better. So yeah, it's like, why would Duke and Carolina ever like agree to work together on, on things, but, but yet like for, for to advocate for basketball rights and college students, the two, two schools have come together and done blood drives and done things together where like, we're going to lift each other up because when one wins, perhaps the other one can elevate the other, you know? So again, back to that March madness <laughs> analogy of, of the rival between uh, Duke and Carolina. But, but I think, I think that's there. I, I'm glad they came together for this. It is very satisfying. The character moments, the battles, the fights, um, you would think that they would cop out on some things, but no, there, there's some real winners. There's some real losers in the midst of this and, and some real character moments in the, in the storyline. So I highly recommend it uh, for our friends out there. And I think it's again, a, a parable and an approach of how to be a team in today's world. Yes. We're our own people. Yeah. We're competitive. We're all trying to get, make our way in this world, but, but we need to find our team. We need to get our friends together. We need to have a team behind us in order to make it in this world. We need a community, a family, um, a team that can surround us, that can help us and lead us uh, to be the people that we're called to be in this world. And and I, I definitely see systematic ecology like that. I see other areas of my, life, my church like that. My family is like that. Uh, the camps that I work at, I've been a part of summer camps uh, coming together for for a collective um, goal of, of working together for a greater good. I, I think that's very, very important. And I hope in this year of an election year or a time when can be really polarized and see us versus then, perhaps we can, we can lay down our shield. Perhaps we can lay down our hammer and we can extend our hand and say, help me understand you and what you've been through in this world. Uh, so that knowing that we have to live in this world together. Um, there, there's my sermon for the day, Christian, <laughs> other thoughts with this series and, and how we approach the world and the gifts that we have. I remembered another moment. Uh, one of my favorites It's a smaller moment, but I think it's issue two where the justice league is in Marvel universe and Batman's been like firm, like do not interfere, do not interfere. And everyone else has listened to what he says, but then Batman sees the Punisher about to kill some, some drug dealers. And what does he do? <laughs> not listen to his own advice. <laughs> Because he's Batman, he wouldn't do that, right? So it, it, the way they play with characters here, like it, it's so obvious that Music and Perez know who they're working with and have an appreciation for them. And I wish we had more comics like that today. Yeah, I I agree. Maybe one day in the future there'll be a DC Marvel movie mashup. We'll bring them together and we'll figure out. Maybe that'll happen at some point. We got to get James Gunn to do that universe for a while and MCU to kind of get back on its feet. And who knows down the down the line? There there's ebbs and flows within the comic book world and business, and same way with movies and uh, the properties we love. But but who knows what we'll see later on. In the meantime. We will be here for all of you, friends, geeks, geekologists, and uh, there's so much content out there when it comes to streaming, when it comes to comic, when it comes to fantasy, when it comes to novels. We're going to keep talking about it. If you have a suggestion of a crossover or a book or a comic that we should be talking about, uh, and you've listened all the way to the end of this episode, uh, please let us know. Email us. 
put it in the comments of one of our social medias. Let us know. We will 100% listen to it and uh, create an episode of, of an idea because we love hearing from you and what's going on. Um, I appreciate Christian. I appreciate our team. Uh, we're not necessarily the Justice League. Uh, we're not necessarily the Avengers. Uh, but you know what we are? We're, we're, we're geekologists. And that, that my friend, is uh, is more weight than Thor's hammer. Sorry, sorry. I don't, I don't know where I was going to go with that. I lost my head in that. <laughs> uh, thanks, folks. Thanks for doing this. And as always, remember, um, share the faith, share the geek. <laughs>